Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome in this new live dedicated to Mongolia and its art and culture. I hope that you had a great week, that everything is uh, going well for you all. Uh, as for me, I had a pretty busy week again with the school, the research, uh, the practice and, and all that. And today we have again quite uh, interesting questions. So I will get into it uh, directly. The first question comes from Bjorn. So he's asking about the new Into the Murder World Show videos, about the new um, content that will uh, come in the next episode. So will the songs in upcoming episodes be the same as in your old tutorial or will it be different ones? So for the new content, as you might have uh, seen, there is a much more uh, theoretical and there, we talk more about the philosophy uh, in this new series, more than in the previous one, because of course the previous one, I did it like four, almost five years ago. I didn't add all this knowledge back then. And I think that it's very important for a person that is playing the murder whore, to know the background uh, of the instrument. So when one can one play the murder, then they will feel more of this Mongolian philosophy, the step, the nature and all that. So that's why so far it has been a lot about the symbolism, about the meanings, about kind of the background philosophy of the instrument. So we have now around 10 episodes so far. Um, I think there will still be something like four to six episodes about techniques and about um, philosophy and stuff like that. So that should bring us around episode 15 or something. And after that, it's going to be all melodies. Uh, so, of course, for each melody, uh, there will be explanation of uh, the meaning of the melody, um, the maybe the legend or the history behind the melody but after like five to six episodes it's gonna be one episode one melody so if some people's uh if some people actually want me to to bring back some melodies from the previous uh series for example maybe which are kind of traditional then that's something that I can do. Uh, so if you are interested into that, you can put uh, your input in the comment below. But in this new series, it's going to be mostly kind of exclusively traditional piece because there is much um, knowledge, much information about the modern things. So I don't think that I need to share anything that is modern. Uh, so it's going to be mostly traditional. So to be a little bit more precise, I have around 15 bilge uh, that I will share from different tribes. Uh, I have few maktads and I have a few dozens of tatlak. So there will be also, of course, pieces that are played in fifth. So that's kind of, uh, it, it, it might bring us at least to episode 100 or something. So uh, as you know, I do a lot of things in parallel, so I cannot work uh, like 100% on this Into the Murder World show. Unfortunately, I wish I could. So I really do my best to release as much as I can. Um, but yeah, the, the, if you want uh, to learn some of the song from the previous series, just write it in the comment but usually it's good but mostly it's gonna be like bilge tatlak some maktads and of course urtindo uh urtindo there is thousands of urtindo so there is really a lot of work to do so for each urtindo in each episode there will be of course the explanation i will share the words i also plan to translate the words so if i don't have the translation i will not um share the, 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 the music in the episode. I will first make the translation in French, in English, in Mongolbichik, and of course in Cyrillic, and share it on the website so you can 
have the full words, the full translation, and um, kind of like a small explanation of the songs. So when you play the music, when you play the melody, you can also know what it is about, and not just like a do, si, re, fa, do, and not just the note, but also the story uh, behind it. So that's kind of the plan for the, the next episode. I see... Uh, so hello is storm um is asking so in the chat in the live chat what's your opinion uh sorry what's your opinion on mongolians effort to restore the mongol bitik will it be successful they tried once before this time why okay so that's a um an interesting interesting uh, question again well the effort um that i can see in mongolia actually there we there is not that many effort uh, to be honest uh, there is a lot of wind but there isn't like um super a lot of concrete things going on except for few artists like for example there is bichik soyan altantunia which now uh, is part of the old uh, ID and adventure. I'm very glad about that. So just a little parenthesis, you can find a book to learn the Mongol Bichik on my website. We are now officially partner. So I'm going to sell her book through my website. So if you are interested, you can go on it, check. There is a few pictures to show you what is this book about. And you can order the shipping cost is included in the price it's 30 euro so unfortunately the shipping cost is a little bit expensive that's why it's 30 euro uh, but definitely that book is super 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 great so if you're interested in learning the Mongol Bichik or the calligraphy this book is a must-have so far now it's only in Mongolian but I'm kind of talking with Alton Tuya and we might work uh, very soon on the on the English version so that's also pretty interesting. So to get back to the question about how Mongolian kind of tried to promote and preserve the Mongol Bichik, uh, well, actually, I don't really know how they plan to do that um, because almost everything is in, in Cyrillic. Now there is some little effort there and there, for example, on the, on the Mongolian national te television, they put the text uh, in Cyrillic and on the side they also, they also put in Mongol Bichik. Uh, there is class of Mongol Bichik. The thing is that there is few issues. Uh, one is that we cannot write easily on computer with Mongol Bichik. So that's a very, very troublesome uh, issue because now, especially the young generation, they use computer, they use smartphone a lot. And there is not that many option uh, to write in Mongol Bichik and to be able to use it easily on any website and everything. So, so that's the first problem. And of course, the Cyrillic, the Latin language is still very present everywhere. Uh, and the Mongol Bichik is still a little bit scarce. So it's kind of start to get back a little bit, especially from coming from artists like Altan Tuya, Bichik Soyot, Rambatar, Anh Bayar, where they are calligrapher and through the calligraphy, they kind of try to promote the art of the Mongol Bichik. So there is also Arigun um, that, that promote the writing of Mongolia. So that, that's kind of, I don't see it as a massive movement. It's more like individuals and some little, um, how to say, kind of cultural center or, or kind of little school that kind of promote. But uh, yeah, there is not, from what I see, from what I saw, a, um, a massive um, government movement to, to kind of force back the Mongol Bichik. I heard that they might, it might be kind of um, a must read, a must know in few years from now, but I'm not exactly sure. So that's kind of uh, for this Mongol Bichik preservation. Um, good morning, Maurice. How are you? 
I'm pretty good. And I see Da Kristar that asks, what's uh, this channel about? This channel is about Mongolia, uh, Mongolia and especially its music, the Maruhor, um, the Urtindo, the Long Song, and the art and culture. We will talk also a bit about history, maybe custom, tradition. So it's kind of to have a free conversation, the live, a free conversation about Mongolia and its art, culture, life, and maybe landscape and, and all that. So I will keep going with uh, the, next, the next question that is coming from Discord. This question is coming from Zachongo. Um, are there any resources for learning the technique of Urtindo online? Urtindo, which is long song. Uh, that's also a pretty interesting question. Unfortunately, um, compared to Homi, the Homi is very popular. So there is a lot, a lot of resource for the Urtindo, which is a little bit more um, discreet and humble, maybe there is almost no um, information, no resources on internet to learn the Urtindo. The few things that you might find useful is the YouTube channel and the Facebook page of Maruhor uh, 89. So why 89? Because in Mongolia, in Mongolian 89 is pronounced nice. So it's like Maruhor nice in Mongolian. Um, so he posts a lot of videos of uh, archive of very old melodies and, and so on of the Urtindo. He also kind of makes some, some karaoke style video uh, for the Urtindo. So basically the Urtindo is going and uh, on kind of like subtitle, there is the different syllable and everything that um, that we need to sing. So there, there is some kind of karaoke. And there is maybe like two or three videos talking about the different techniques of the Urtindo. But that's kind of it. Um, the Urtindo is not very, very popular. Um, I don't know why. That's, uh, that maybe that's too spiritual and that's more about being humble compared to the Homi, which is very often a big competition of who is the best. Uh, maybe that's a reason why the Urtindo is um, a little bit more discreet. Also, it can be seen sometimes as, as a very religious, kind of like the Buddhism, the Buddhism mantras or, or chants or stuff like that. Um, so I'm trying, I really want to spread the Urtindo more because that's a very, very unique and great uh, art in Mongolia. So definitely that's a, that's a, a melody, that's melodies and, and singing that needs to be spread and understood by more people, in my opinion. So yeah, for the resources, except for the page of Maruhor Nice, Maruhor uh, 89, there, there is very, very little information uh, about the Urtindo. As for me, for what I'm trying to do, of course, there is the Into the Maruhor uh, show that will gradually get more and more into the Urtindo. I'm writing a book right now which translates around like 15 Urtindo. Uh, and I want to translate, if possible, if I have the time in my life to translate every Urtindo, but that's going to be super, super huge work. Um, and yeah, that, that's uh, kind of it for the, for the Urtindo long song. So I hope that answers uh, the question. So now, but next to the to the to the next part of the question, actually, um, how similar is the vocal technique to standard or Western singing? Um, so standard or Western singing, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure because it can be hip hop, it can be opera. It can be a lyric, uh, it can be, I don't know, there is so many different kinds of singing in Western uh, culture and in standard culture. So I'm not sure how to answer uh, that question. Of course, there is different uh, because we are in Asia, Western, like Europe or American, they have different kind of singing techniques, um, different kind of gam. They don't play the same notes. Uh, the, the harmony is quite different. So um, basically for the Urtindo, 
the the techniques the idea is to sometimes one word can last for a minute so for example That's kind of like stretching uh, the syllable very, very long. And on those syllables, there is some kind of vibratos. There is what we call the tzokhet. <laughs> this kind of effect. And also we use the head voice. Uh, so for example, <laughs> So that's called the uh, shoronga, and there is like the dafar shoronga. So it's like a double time. So we go first one time, and then we go again one time. So for example, <laughs> so um, that's like uh, this kind of effect. Uh, in the voice and always very, very, very long. Uh, it, it always lights la, um, lasts for a long time. So usually the average duration for Urtindo can be like a half an hour if it's like sang uh, fully. Now, nowadays, as you saw, maybe in the previous Into the Murderhood episode, um, it kind of changed a bit. Now most people just sing the first um, paragraph, verse, and kind of omit the, 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 the rest. Like sometimes it can be like 15, 20, 30 verse that is uh, totally ignored uh, because of the stage uh, form. Of course, we cannot play in a one hour concert. We cannot play one hour, one song. Uh, it needs to be different. It, it needs to have variation. So now in the Urtindo, it's kind of saying just like only one verse, unfortunately. But for me, in terms of energy, in terms of experience, in terms of feelings, actually going through the full song, through the full length is actually really, really amazing. It's kind of like a meditation. It's very peaceful. There is a lot of images coming and it's, um, yeah, it's, um, it's really amazing. So that's uh, kind of for the Urtindo. I hope that it answers uh, the question. So I can I can move to the to the next question, which is very short one. Uh, it's coming from Owen, and he's asking uh, what does the E initial in your name stand for? <laughs> so actually, it stands for two things. Um, the first, obviously, is my second name, which is Eric, uh, and the second one is uh, my nickname, my artist digital kind of gamer nickname, with, which is Ikian. Uh, Ikian is like a hunter in the Greek uh, mythology that was born from the teeth of a dragon. So that's very specific. Um, and it's also the name of, a, of um, how to say, a river in the antique Greece. So I took this word, this name from the metamorphosis of Ovid, like uh, many years ago. So actually the E come, goes for my second name, Eric, and goes for my digital artist nickname. And also when I played video game, uh, Ikion. So E-K-I-O-N. So that's for this uh, little interesting question. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Um, the next one is from Mev. Actually, he got a few different questions at the same time. So the first time is, I don't know if you are here, Mev. I hope you are. Um, so you can see the, the answer live directly. Um, so the first part of the, the different question is, 
Have you ever seen a shaman ceremony or a ritual? Okay, so first, um, something that needs to be said, in, in my opinion, is that a person is not a shaman. Uh, a, pers a person is a, like the, the, the physical meat, the physical thing that uh, is a person, is a host for the spirit of a shaman. Uh, that's how it's understood in Mongolia. And actually, we don't really say shaman for a person. We say zerang for a um, male shaman and uh, otrang for a female person that will host the spirit of a shaman. So that's a little bit different uh, way of saying also because a lot of people, especially the fake one, uh, tend to say very easily, yeah, I'm a shaman, I'm a shaman. So it's a very egoistic uh, way to say it. That's also, there is a lot of arrogance very often into that. So that's why I felt like I needed to just put a little bit of insight on this. And yeah, of course, I went to a lot of different ritual. I saw a lot of things, uh, some things that you have seen like, the person leaking uh, kind of like a, a glowing uh, super hot knife or metal or, or stuff like that. Um, I saw a lot of things. I actually was going to this kind of ceremony and ritual almost once a week uh, or once every two weeks um, when I came in Mongolia because I had few opportunities to, to meet um, with these people. So I, I went to that. Uh, I, I don't really know what to had, add because for me, uh, this is a very intimate thing. That's not something that we should um, expose that easily. Um, that, that's a very sacred uh, ritual. That's a very sacred form of respect to the nature, to Tengir. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't want to make it like a show. Uh, I think that's a very private thing. Uh, people need to go go through it very respectfully uh, with humility because it's also very, very powerful. So that's not something to play with. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of like my, my vision, my opinion about maybe the shamanism uh, and this, I don't want to say religion, but uh, this worship, I would say. So I hope that answers the question. The second part of uh, Mev questions is, um, are you planning to visit France or going back to France uh, forever? So my idea so far right now is that I don't plan to leave Mongolia uh, anytime soon. I, I kind of think of staying all my life here, uh, keep doing the research and spread the culture and maybe help foreigner uh, get accustomed to the culture, uh, to know Mongolia better. So I don't really plan to, to leave. I, I plan to stay here for long, for sure, stay in Mongolia for a long time. Uh, but if there is any occasion, opportunity to go in Europe, in the States, in Australia, whatever the country, it is to make conference, to make concert, to talk about the culture like a, a cultural trip or something like that, of course, I would be more than happy to collaborate with people, to collaborate with schools or, or university or cultural center abroad, um, to get there, to share what I know and to spread and to educate people about the culture, about the Urtindo, about the Maruhur, uh, what are the difference between the modern Maruhur, the traditional one, the legend and all that. So definitely, yeah, I would like to maybe when I will finish my master and that I will have a, a little icon on my name, which say that I'm an official researcher, official Mongolian scholar. Maybe I will have more opportunity. Uh, but so far for financial reason and also there is like a worldwide uh, sickness going on, uh, the opportunity are a little bit rare. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan, basically staying in Mongolia as long as I can to keep spreading the culture and maybe eventually going there and there uh, to spread again the culture, but abroad 
in English, in French, with other countries, with other cultures. So, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. Now, um, and this question is actually super cool. The next one of Mev again, from uh, is a very curious guy, <laughs> and he likes <clears throat> deep things. So, um, the the third part of his question is like, can you tell us exactly the real legend of the murderer? So, I have heard of of the legend with the horseman who lost his horse and made the instrument from the remains of his mount. Okay, so that's a very great question again. Uh, so as I'm not a god, I cannot really tell you the exact pure legend original of the murderer. I'm just a simple man. <laughs> but um, the, the legend that you have like, um, that you have seen and read, Hello Vengul, and hello, Alteski Kazak. Nice to see you. Um, so the, the legend that you have seen and, and read or heard, uh, Mev, it's most probably the legend of Huhu Namjil. Uh, so to make it short, because there is like dozens of versions, uh, Huhu Namjil is like a guy that can really, really, really sing super great. Uh, he's in the army. And when the general of the army hear his voice, um, he just decided that, okay, this guy with such a beautiful voice, we cannot send him to war because if we lose such a beautiful voice, then that's, that, that would be just a shame. So what the general say is say that, okay, you're going to take care of the horse and you're not going to fight. You're not going to fight. So Huku Namjil going to uh, take care of the horse. Uh, he will have his own horse and from there, there is like um, many, many different versions. Uh, some say that it's a magical horse. Some say it can fly. Uh, some say that uh, it's to meet a girl. The girl sometimes is just a girl, but sometimes it's like kind of half god girls, a spirit of a lake, or if, there is like a dozen of versions. So it's a little bit difficult to, how to say, to talk about this legend uh, shortly because there is so many different version uh, but the thing to know is that there is a lot of chance that Huhu Namjil is not the first legend uh, about the Maruhur it might be maybe two or three hundred years so that's kind of like what a lot of people a lot of researchers supposed uh, because of the language level the words that are used oh my dog is like super dreamy <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, Huhu Namjil might not be the first legend. There is actually a, um, another uh, writing in the 13th century in the history of uh, in the sacred history of Mongolians. Uh, that to, it's not really a legend. It's more like um, how to say um, a proof that there were a murderer back in the 13th century. It's the 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 part with the Arrosan which kind of like is angry uh, with what Chinggis Khan is doing because he's not in the country, he's, he's going abroad and all that. So um, it's, it's kind of like goes uh, messy. And he, he, he chose to play the murderer even though it was uh, forbidden. Um, and he's a little bit drunk and all that. So th there, I, I will not go in too much in detail into that. Uh, so there is this uh, kind of proof that comes from the 13th century. And uh, there is actually a legend, a double legend from the Orianghe tribe that Dotlambach uh, gathered from Avirmet Toj. Uh, I think it's like uh, maybe in, in the 50s or 60s or no, maybe 60s or 70s or something like that. I have the book actually. Um, and... There is no flying horse. There is no uh, uh, super great singer and, and all that. Uh, it actually, it's actually kind of like a good arrow and a bad arrow. And the, in the first version, the good arrow, out of intuition, out of his like uh, cleverness or, or something like that, um, he kind of created the murderer but the sound is very screechy. So he actually gonna go 
the bad arrow going to go to the good arrow. So, and he will ask advice. What, what's going on? My, my creation should be perfect, should have a great sound, but the sound is awful. What did I do wrong? Uh, what's going on and all that. So the good hero will check his instrument and will say, ah, yeah, the, the, how to say, the string, the strings are too thin and you did put too much rosin on the bow. So, um, so you need to put more horsehair and you need to take out some rosin from the bow. So the bad arrow um, gonna make the change and he will play the murder horn and the sound is insanely great. It's like beautiful, it's awesome. And what's gonna happen is that the good arrow actually gonna steal this idea and gonna say to the world that he created the murder horn. So it's kind of the good arrow stealing the idea of the bad arrow um, and, and spread it to the, to, the, to, to the world. So the idea actually uh, in Mongolia, in, in, the, in the legend, in the text, it's not really good arrow or bad arrow. It's kind of devil and God. Uh, but in Mongolia, it's not really devil and God like we could understand in the Christian uh, philosophy. So it's more like a good person or a good hero. And the good hero is doing bad things and the bad hero is doing good things. So it's kind of like a way that Mongolian have to kind of teach uh, things to people, teach humility and this kind of thing. So that was the first version. And in the second version, that's the good hero that lost uh, his mom and out of gr uh, grief, he's going to create this murder whore. And But the sound, again, there is a lot uh, of issues. The, the sound is not good and, and all that. So it's very close to the first version with the bad arrow. And he will, uh, the good arrow, when the sound is not good, he will try to seek a seer, like a person that can see uh, an information and all that. And the seer going to say, okay, um, you need to see the bad arrow is the one responsible for the death or the, the disappearance of your mom. So you need to talk with him. So the good arrow will go to the bad arrow, will ask and talk and all that. And the bad arrow going to give advice. Uh, you need to do this and that. And then after the advice are applied to uh, the instrument, the instrument sounds great. So I'm kind of doing like a, a sum up of the two versions, uh, so it's not too long, but know that I'm actually planning to do an animated video uh, with a Mongolian artist, which is partner of Oror, to make like an illustrated animated video of these two legends. Um, so that will be a little bit more user friendly uh, than me just talking briefly about it like that. But that's kind of to give you an idea. And according to Avirmet, the touch, the, so the, the epic singer, uh, it's like a legend that is at least 2,000 years old. So that might be the, 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 the first uh, version of the legend of the creation of the Meruro. And if we kind of connect with the technology, there is a lot of people also, I, I met like an a archery researcher that that told me um, that Mongolian to tune kind of the tension of the, the, the bow, they were like kind of making sound. And that might be an how the, the creation of bowed instrument kind of came to mind of, uh, of the first maker by seeing the shape of the, the bow and kind of seeing that by uh, kind of like tuning it, the, there is a sound and after maybe putting a bowl to make a resonation, a box and stuff like that. So, so I, I like this Orianha uh, legend better because it's a little bit more concrete. It's less, it's less of a fairy tale. It sounds much more uh, real. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of like uh, what I know about the, the legend uh, of the, the murder horn. So definitely I, I, I'm kind of like working on an animated version of this legend. So it, I hope to release it um, very soon. So I hope that answers uh, the question, Nev. And I think Mev has another 
Ah, yeah, he has actually another uh, question. It's about the tough shore. So is there a legend about the tough shore? Uh, are there rules on how to play it or hold a tough shore? If I listen to Tud, so Epic, they don't play the tough shore like someone who plays a Dombra uh, or Dosh uh, They are just plugging the strings um, one after another. Is there a meaning behind it? Okay, so that's a, that's a great, great question. And I was actually wondering when I would talk about that. So first I will, I will uh, take the tough shore. So kind of like traditional tough shore. It's a little bit long, uh, a little bit longer than real, real epic singer tough shore, um, but that the shape is, is really uh, kind of like official, if I, if I could say. <clears throat> so I guess there is legend about tough shore, but as it's not really my subject, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure there is, but I don't know. So that's kind of it. What I can tell you, I will just drink a little bit. What I can tell you, um, the thing I learned from my kind of like third teacher or third uh, epic reference person, the person who actually made this instrument for me. Um, it's about, there is a few symbol on the tough shore and it, yeah, the playing has a meaning. It's not just plugging the strings, actually. What he explained me um, basically is that the first thing is that about this shape, the shape of the, the, the head kind of. Um, the idea is that when we are playing, um, the, the epic singer is kind of like swallowing the bad energy of the place of the people, taking it in this area and then while playing and singing, Kind of, kind of like, um, I would say, um, throwing it away on this shape. So this shape is actually some kind of like, um, like a jumper for bad energy, uh, something like that. So it, it, it's kind of like, okay, when I play the bad energy is swallowed there. And then as I play, it's like uh, thrown away like that. Um, yeah, thrown away like this. So that's the meaning of this shape. Also, this is uh, the shape of the moon. So because uh, usually we, we only sing the epic in uh, the, the night. We don't sing epics during the day. Okay, so another thing that is very important to know about the tough shore, and that's a mistake that is very, 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 very often made. It's like, maybe you know this uh, spoon, which is called satslak, which is used to, to make the, the, the offering of the milk. And very often people actually carve the nine hole on the head. But the thing is that, those hole is actually this part. So if I if I kind of make it's kind of like that. So if I would be to use this instrument to throw milk, I would actually put the milk here and then throw like that. Because back in time, uh, it wasn't exactly this shape. They they would usually almost use like a, I would say um, a ladle. I think it's a ladle in English, like kind of to, to you know, take the soup and all that. And actually the, 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 the bowl part of the ladle would be the resonating uh, area of the tough shore. So this 
part is actually this part like this and not uh like that so that i ah, yeah lado so ladle okay <laughs> thanks owen for for the for the help for the live help so so that's something that is very important to be known uh it's just that this shape look like a spoon so actually people carve the nine hole or sometimes five but that's very wrong that's kind of the opposite this is where the milk should be put and thrown away to the sky and and to the nature so that that's very important and the last thing that you you asked uh and that's the most beautiful in my opinion uh why they are just uh plugging kind of the the strings actually there is a meaning behind that so the idea is that uh for holding the instrument you just hold it the way you are comfortable with because uh, an epic will last for a few hours sometimes for a few days so if you you hold the instrument like that of course you're not gonna be able to play for like 10 hours straight so you just hold it in a way that is very comfortable for you and for the plugging things usually traditionally in a uh, epic situation like epic epic singing situation we only pull yeah pull from top uh, from bottom to top so from the ground to tinger and we're not gonna go back from tinger to the ground because the idea is to elevate the energy so it's kind of like cleaning the bad energy and also making the energy of the area same with the urtindo making the energy of the area of peoples around there uh, of the the spirits and all that going from a low energy pushing it to tinger pushing it to a higher energy so usually uh, it's only with one finger so like this and it goes like that there there is no this kind of thing is kind of like i would not say prohibited but that's kind of that, that kind of goes against the whole philosophy of bringing the energy high uh, in in the place. So I had the and as you asked before, is I if I saw um, ritual of shaman, I actually saw ritual of tuz. And man, the energy level when the guy is singing, it's like crazy. I mean, I was moving on my seat like literally like the energy is so huge is so powerful that the, the body is just moving uh with this rhythm it, it, it's like um it's like incredible and, and uh, the 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 ceremony i saw lasted for 11 hours so basically sitting for 11 hours listening the guy uh, reciting the the epic that was epic. That was definitely epic. Um, and, and yeah, th there is so much to talk about the Tult. So maybe I will talk, uh, that maybe I will make a live especially about the epics or, or later some people might have other questions. So that, that's kind of for the position, the meaning of the different part. Um, I, at least what I know, I'm sure there is more. Um, and kind of the meaning behind how how they plug and why they plug, uh, they, they pull the string like that. So everything has a meaning in Mongolia. There is nothing without a meaning in Mongolia. This doesn't exist. Everything is meaningful in this country. So let me put that back. <clears throat> so, and I think actually, I remember that Mev to ask me, <laughs> asked me if I could sing Homie on the live. And now I feel a little bit shy <laughs> because I'm really not a Homie singer. Uh, I had just some curiosity about that uh, like five, six years ago when I when I kind of like get interested into the metaphor. But I don't practice. I, I, I suck at it totally. So, so I'm not sure that's a good idea. <laughs> I will lose my credibility 
after after that. <coughs> so, but yeah, I can try a little bit. <sighs> and I see Dashumbo saying like, oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I cannot stay serious. <laughs> well, that's enough for the homie from the guy you cannot sing at all. So this is not homie. This is not Karira. It's just a guy that uh, that kind of have fun with his throat and that try to mimic the professional. Okay, so that that that's kind of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm very shy when it comes to that. Because I'm not good uh, with that, I'm more like into the long song now. So, so yeah. And I think that the chat has been very, very busy. So I'm just gonna check a little bit uh, if there is some questions and stuff. Oh wow, there there is so many uh, things that was written. So Alteski Kazak, I plan on visiting Mongolia as soon as I can. I currently live in the US, so it could be a while, but I'm saving it. Yeah, man, please come visit us here. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Vengul, finally I catch your live. Thanks for coming. Just read that stuff about the Motorhole website in the Discord. Are those instruments really that bad? uh no it's 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 not that bad uh it's just that like um especially for like um mongolia mongolai i i don't know the the name how to pronounce the name i know there is like two or three web website i think that toman also sell kind of murder but it's it's uh the problem is that the price is super expensive that's like uh that's like five, not five, I'm, I'm a little bit too much, but at least two to three times the, the real price. Um, and sometimes it's not even real instrument. Uh, sometimes they sell like a half toy kind of souvenir instrument. Uh, I, I think on Discord, there was one or two guys that, that bought like from Mongolia or Toman. And they paid like, uh, they paid like so much for like, that wasn't even an adult instrument. That was like a kid souvenir. It, it was too small, it, 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 no sound at all, it, it, and it was like too expensive. So um, the thing is that as the murder is not that well known, uh, there is a lot of people that tend to, to, to sell it like super expensive. Uh, for example, a 100 euro murder that is sold free or 400 euro, uh, I don't know, that, that's a little bit too much in my opinion. Uh, maybe they have like, a, well, I don't know their situation or anything, but I think that it's a little bit, uh, how to say, well, yeah, I think it's too ex too much. So, so about the quality, uh, well, I, I know from experience and from like people who bought like from other website um, that they had trouble um, that it wasn't really real instrument, that it was too expensive. Sometimes the instrument was good, but still the price was like three or four times more than the real price. So before, if you want to buy a murder, uh, I would really suggest you to research uh, a bit more about it. Now you're, you are on this live, so you can join the Discord and you can ask on Discord because on maybe not every people, not every person on Discord bought an instrument, but a lot of the people on Discord actually bought an instrument from different websites, from different people, from different person. So you can ask there, uh, what is their experience, if they are happy or not, uh, if the instrument is worth the price and everything. So I would really suggest you to, to check out a little bit uh, thoroughly the different website, the different people ask on the Discord the experience from other uh, person that bought instruments so you can have a better idea. Because especially right now with the COVID, with, we are 
a lot of person are artists. We have a lot of financial issue, issues. And I think that spending 500 euro on a piece of garbage is not, uh, is not nice. I mean, that's pretty bad. So, and a lot of websites actually sell super, super expensive piece of garbage, seriously. So be very careful. Um, ask advice, ask for advice. Be sure to double check, triple check with people who actually really bought on these websites. Um, and if you need any help, of course, I'm happy to help and I ship instrument uh, regularly. I have like few testimony on my website on Discord. There is, I think, 20, maybe 25 person bought from me that can um, tell you their experience uh, by buying with me, how it went, how is the quality of the instrument, if I was honest or not. So you can you can check it out. So that would be really my advice about buying a motorboard on internet. There is a lot of scam, so be very careful. That, that would be what I would say. Um, then, Zachongo, you'll be able to get a much higher quality instrument for a much better price if you buy from Steve. He can explain why. Okay, that's what I just did. Thanks uh, for the support, Zachongo. Did you buy it from Steve, from the seller? I just wrote, never, it was on her, da, 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 da. Okay, so they, there was a little bit of conversation about uh, buying instrument. So, Vengul is actually asking are there any ways to learn the instrument yourself? Uh, teach yourself in a way you don't find much on the internet about it, sadly. Well, I would say that uh, as uh, actually Alte, Alteski Kazak uh, said, um, what I share on the internet about the Merhun might be one of the very rare, if not the only resource uh, that is a little bit objective and honest about learning the traditional Maruhor. There is few videos there and there um, from different Maruhors, uh, but usually that's not consistent. That's usually four or five lessons. It's kind of teaching the scale, uh, how to hold the instrument, and, and that's kind of it. I know there is seven episodes that was made um, I think it, in the 80s on the, na the national television of Mongolia, um, but that's also very, how to say, that, that's uh, for a real beginner that knows nothing, that's already a little bit difficult, in my opinion, that doesn't really cover the basics. Uh, and actually someone shared these episodes on the Discord, so you can, you can find from there. Um, and yeah, for, for learning the murder by yourself, I, we thought, I don't want to be arrogant or to sound not humble or anything, but except from what I share, there is very, very few information. So I would really suggest you to follow the, the Into the Murder World series and episode. It, I usually goes quite in depth and really cover from the very basic things uh, to learn the instrument by yourself. Also, if you want, you can join the Discord. You can ask questions there. And I usually, uh, for specific questions, for specific people, I am always happy to give a feedback uh, to kind of try to correct. Uh, ah, this position is a little bit wrong. Try like that. Or, or I always try to, to answer questions from people that are on Discord. And for also people that subscribe on my website, I give a personal feedback. I, I, I make a video that I put on YouTube that I share on private server or private channel on Discord. And every subscriber can see uh, this kind of like a specific custom answers that I make on videos. So you can join there also. Um, and that can help you have feedback, uh, progress, get better. Also, the community is sharing a lot uh, between each other. So <laughs> he's hitting a big, yeah, a big boat. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can definitely like um, come on Discord, share there and, and learn a lot. There is a lot of great things going on there. A um, lot of great sharing, great music sharing, a lot of ideas, language and all that. So the, the community is now almost like 150 person 
everyone is passionate everyone is very polite everyone is very respectful to each other so the the vibe is super positive there is a lot of sharing uh and and i hope it grows more and we learn more from each other and share more to each other so yeah that that i would really suggest you to join uh discord Okay, uh, da, da, da. there's no fret like a guitar, so you just have to watch and listen over and over again. Actually, um, there is a chart on, on my website, uh, Steve Morel Tech, Tech Info slash sharing slash murderer. And there is a chart where you can have the, the, the size, where is where are the different notes so from the top bridge maybe two centimeter the first note four centimeter the second one and all that so you can use that chart to to put mark on your strings or on your neck on the neck of the instrument so you can also have a visual help uh, to find the notes um, also you can use the video uh, of into the murder that uh, and play with me with the video so it can also help your hearing and help find the notes and, and all that. Uh, I would love to start learning, but I need to wait a bit before I buy one. Yep, I will definitely do that. It's my dream. Question is from who I buy and why. Steve sounds good, but the Motorola website sounds interesting too, but heard from quality problem. Yeah, again, I would say that you, you can just come on Discord and ask uh, the experience of people. I know that uh, on Discord, some people bought from Murderhor. A lot of people also bought <laughs> from, uh, from me. So you can ask the different experience, how it was, and, and, and make your decision afterward. <laughs> yes, he's super cute. He's starting to wake to wake up. It's been an hour. Is he, so so now he's starting to wake up. Um, yeah, that is a rescue. He's a rescue dog. He, he, we've been together for three weeks now, and he was in the street for maybe a year or something. And I dreamt about him a uh, few months before few months ago and when i saw him on the the rescue group on facebook i was like what and then i just decided to look for him it took me four days to find him i worked a lot and then after i found him and and took him home cleaned it up now he's starting to get chubby a little bit so that's that's good <laughs> Um, yeah, fascinating. It's not a portion of Boyan ancestry, but I only know Russian. Okay. Ah, uh, Mongol Hunis. Ah, Wood Mongol Hunis on Sars and Rita. Be a world gene, Mongol Buchiks or Hustura, give Chitrichi to shoot Ah, when. Um, Mongol Bichikare Hitsu Biche. So, ah, maybe you didn't see. Um, there is, I will make promotion again. There is that book from Altantuya to learn the Mongol Bichik. You can order from my website. We have a partnership now. It's all in Mongolia, in Mongolian. So, this is the, the she signed my, my version of the book. And then in the book, there is actually uh, Mongol Bichik writing. So that's the writing of Altan Tuya. Here you can copy it. So that's kind of your practice. Here you, you, you should make the conversion into Cyrillic. And there, there is uh, like rules of writing, how to write correctly uh, the Mongol Bichik. So there is like a 30, um, 30, I was about to say 30 episodes, 30 parts. So it's like a one part per day. So for 30 day, for 30 days, you're gonna have one lesson per day. And it's, it, it's really gonna teach you, uh, like I, I wouldn't say everything you need to know about the Mongol Bichik, but almost. And it's 30 euro on my website. The shipping is included. So it's a little bit expensive because of the shipping, uh, but still 30 euro for this, amount of quality uh, to learn the Mongol Bichik that's, 
I mean, that's really good. So, so yeah, if you want to learn the Mongol Bichik, this book now is starting to be maybe one of the best uh, book that you can find. So, yeah. Um, online, the Mongol Bichik in class bear. Uh, yeah, there is like some videos uh, about the Mongol Bichik in Mongolian uh, that was made, I think, in, in in the 80s, 90s, 1990s or something like that. So there is few YouTube videos. So that, that's possible to find indeed. Um, okay, this is class 20. I'm sure we can find the rest. So yeah, I just went through the, the, chat, the chat. I wanted to be sure that I don't forget um, any, any questions or any comments. So I, I just had a quick quick scroll and quick check on it. So it's been an hour actually. Uh, so I, I, I think that's it for today. I hope that it was interesting. I hope that you enjoyed the live, uh, that you enjoyed my little mascot that came to say hello at some point. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's it. So again, as usual, feel free to share, to like, to subscribe to the channel if you like the content if you want to be sure to get the new the notification for the new episode for the new live and all that and know that uh you can support what i do this cultural sharing uh by buying like this book or buying calligraphies from my shop you can also make a subscription recurrent subscription it can be one dollar every month it can be five dollar every month you can choose the different option Every gesture, every help uh, is super, super, super appreciated, super welcome. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of it. And to really feel free to join the Discord. Uh, there is a lot of great things going on there. Um, so that's it. Until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you. Bye-bye.